Greetings and welcome to your favorite home of black entertainment. That's non full Flicks, of course, are bringing you only quality and the best. Catching up with Nam Sandlovu. I'm coming to you from Johannesburg, South Africa, alongside my other colleagues from all over the world. Today's news headlines reads as follows. Rhodes Memorial Restaurant burnt down in the Western Cape. Zondo Commission offices burnt down. South Africans want justice for Lindani Mieni. Students face bleak future after confusion of NAFSA's funding. Suspected poachers killed by herd of elephants. Nyaupe addict beaten after soccer match that was geared towards helping Nyaupe addicts. Fire at Charlotte Matlaika Hospital has been extinguished. And Matikizela Blast DA for double standards over qualifications saga. Sapra recommends government to lift pause on J and J vaccine. That's your Johnson and Johnson uh, vaccine. And then Gulls River police hunt down two assailants in suspected gang-related murders. Those are your headlines. Let's uh, take a short break and make sure that you stay tuned. <music> Welcome back. You're watching Catching Up with myself, Nam Sandlovu. Remember to uh, uh, send us your comments and your suggestions on our social media pages. Your addresses are on your screens. We really love hearing from you. And remember to please include your name and where in the world you are texting us from. Right now, though, it's time for your news bulletin. Rose Memorial Restaurant burnt down, confirms Table Mountain National Park. And in Cape Town, while the wildfire had initially gutted out the Rhodes Memorial Restaurant and Tea Garden, Table Mountain National Park, otherwise known as TMNP, has confirmed that the restaurant has indeed burnt down. Firefighters were still battling to get the Rhodes Memorial wildfire under control on Sunday, this is yesterday, TMNP fire manager Philip Prince said, we currently have 129 firefighters on the line from TMNP NCC wildfires working on fire, City of Cape Town Fire and Rescue Services and volunteer wildfire services. More firefighting crews will be joining us shortly. TMNP and the City of Cape Town have four helicopters currently operating in the area. There are numerous other water tankers and firefighting vehicles on the scene managed between TMNP and the City of Cape Town. Prince also added it can be confirmed that the Rhodes Memorial Restaurant has unfortunately burnt down. The fire has also spread to the felt above the University of Cape Town known as UCT, Upper Campus and to areas below the M3. Roads have been closed and please be vigilant when traveling through these areas. According to footage from the scene, the fire has spread to buildings on UCT's campus including the library and the faculty his building. Unfortunately, um, uh, people have to deal with that situation in Cape Town. We wish you all the best and uh, are, are with you in prayer. Our next story, Zondo Commission officers burglared and laptops stolen. In Johannesburg, the Judicial Commission of Inquiry into allegations of state capture, corruption and fraud in the public sector, including organs of state, have confirmed that its officers in Parktown were broken into by unknown people this past Saturday. ENCA reported on Sunday that the commission's offices in Parktown were burglared on Saturday night and various items were removed from them, which included laptops and other items. Commission spokesperson Mbuiselo Stimela confirmed that the offices were broken into but could not give finer details of the incident. This matter is still under police investigation. We will use or we will issue a statement later after obtaining details of their burglary from the police, Stemela said. He, however, said the commission hearings will continue today despite the break-in at its offices. The commission will hear parliamentary oversight-related evidence from the Speaker 
of the National Assembly, Tanti Modise. The Commission will also hear evidence from the Chairperson of the National Council of Provinces, that's Mr. Amos Masondo, Stimela said. He said the Commission was also scheduled to have an evening session to hear parliamentary oversight related evidence from the National Chairperson and the former ANC Secretary General, that's Ubabu Kote Mantashe. And our next story, South Africans want justice for young father Lindani Mieni killed by U.S. police. And in Durban, efforts to repatriate the body of Lindani Mieni, who was shot and killed by officers from the Honolulu Police Department in Hawaii in the U.S. on Wednesday night are underway. The GoFundMe account with a target of over one million to take care of uh, his body transportation back to his hometown near Richards Bay, uh, funeral costs and possible legal fees was created this past Friday by close friends and family. Mieni, who was 29 years old, a mechanical engineer and a former professional rugby player who had a green card interview scheduled for next week, was living on the island with his American wife, Lindsay, and two young children. On the night of his murder, his wife said he had left their home and gone for a drive to clear his head. About 20 minutes later, she contacted him and he told her he was on his way home. Police, however, alleged that Mieni entered a home in an area close by, exhibiting strange behavior. He allegedly sat down, took off his shoes and struck up a conversation with the homeowners who were in turn upset and asked him to leave. Mieni then went to sit in his vehicle, the police claimed. During a press conference on Thursday, Susan Barlett, uh, Office Chief of the Honolulu Police Department, told the media that the three officers were dispatched to a robbery in progress and when they arrived at the residence, the homeowner pointed out Mieni as the suspect. When police arrived, Mieni allegedly got out his vehicle and charged at the police officers. Officer one ordered the suspect to get on the ground. The suspect turned and charged toward the officer, punching him several times times officer two tried to get the suspect off the officer one and when officer three arrived on the scene and pulled out his taser it was ineffective students face a bleak future after confusion over nasfas funding and in Cape Town, more than 7,000 students have approached lawyers in relation to government funding on their education at tertiary institutions. The students, some of whom were in their final year of studies, said they were told by the National Student Financial Aid Scheme, otherwise known as NASAS, in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic last year that they would no longer be funded. Now they are taking legal steps and accusing NASFAS of incorrect application of the N plus 2 rule under which they were allowed funding for up to two extra years they would take to finish their degrees. They have demanded that NASA suspend its decision to decline funding to students as a result of the incorrect application of the N plus 2 rule by no later than April 13th. The move comes as postgraduate students in education have also complained of being ditched by NASA's, uh, leaving them with no alternative. A letter by the attorneys noted that the students had their funding and allowances withdrawn and or rejected by NASA's for the academic year as a result of the spontaneous and incorrect directive issued by the Minister of Higher Education last year. The N2 Plus rule, which was implemented with NAFSIS, was a basary scheme uh, providing for students to be funded for the minimum number of years required to complete a qualification plus an additional two in the case where students would have extra years this is what the lawyer said they claim that nafsas failed to determine whether or not the affected students had exceeded the maximum number of years in terms of which they were eligible to be funded our next story suspended poacher killed by herd of uh, and to our next story, suspected poacher killed by a herd of elephants in Kruger National Park. In Cape Town, one suspected poacher was killed by elephants in the Kruger National Park while fleeing from rangers with two accomplices. The South African National Park, that's the SANP Park, said, SANP Park said one of the men was arrested during the incident on Saturday. The deceased and his accomplices were fleeing from rangers when they ran into a breeding herd of elephants, said SANP Parks. Field rangers were out on a routine patrol at the 
Pambeni area when they detected incoming spore and made a follow-up in pursuit of these suspects. SA in Parks said the three people were spotted by the rangers and they requested backup from the air wing and canine unit. When the three realized they were being spotted, they dropped an axe and a bag with their provisions and tried to flee. One of the suspected poachers was arrested and informed the rangers that they ran into a herd of elephants, adding that he was sure his accomplice had escaped. The rangers discovered his accomplice badly trampled and who had unfortunately succumbed to his injuries. The third suspect is said to have been injured in the eye but continued to flee, SAN Park said. A rifle was recovered and the case was referred to police whom together with the pathology team attended to the scene. And our next story, Nyaupe addict beaten after a soccer match that was geared towards helping addicts. And in Rustenburg, a sports day against crime aimed at taking drug addicts away from drugs ended on a sour note on Saturday when a Nyaupe drug addict was severely beaten in Latabong outside Rustenburg. A group of drug addicts went to a local shop after they played a soccer match, which they lost 2-1. When they arrived at the shop, one of them reportedly went inside to buy cigarettes. The shopkeeper allegedly called a group of people uh, from the community known by the locals as Umpagati to assist him as he suspected the group would cause trouble at the store. Upon arrival, Umpagati allegedly beat one of the addicts and set his leather jacket alight. He suffered a bruise on his chin and had a swollen face. We spent the day at the sports ground. We did not cause any uh, problems to anyone and now we are being attacked, said one of the addicts to police's as they tried to establish what led to the incident. He was eventually taken to a local clinic for medical attention. An irate group of addicts encouraged him to open a case against Umpagati at the police station. And in Johannesburg, a fire at the Charlotte Matlaike Academic Hospital has been extinguished according to the city of Johannesburg EMS. The Johannesburg Emergency Services said that a fire investigation team would determine the original cause and circumstances surrounding the fire at the hospital. The fire at the hospital broke out on Friday morning at the hospital's special dispensary stores. Premier of Gauteng, that's David, announced that the hospital in Johannesburg will be temporarily shut down for seven days to assess the situation. Services at the hospital have been suspended and no patients will be allowed into the hospital. Makuru and senior provincial government officials met with the hospital's management and emergency services officials. He announced the shutdown of the hospital because of the smoke had been funneled through the hospital. And our next story, Matigizela Blas, DA for double standards over his qualifications saga. In Cape Town, maybe there are individuals within the party who see us all as experiments, said suspended DA Western Cape leader Bongi Nkosi Matigizela. The embattled Western Cape MEC for Public Works and Transport spoke out for the first time on Saturday after he was suspended over a qualifications scandal. Matikizela said he believes there are individuals within the party each time he contests leadership positions either within the DA or in the DA-led government in the Western Cape. He also claimed wrongdoers within the party were not treated equally as it depended on who is willing to be controlled. Matikizela was suspended for two weeks by Premier Allen after this week, after it emerged that he had not completed the BCom degree in human resources listed on his CV, an occurrence Matikizela claims was an error. Last year, he was also investigated by the party for allegations that he was involved in a plot to assassinate his opponent for the position of provincial DA leader, Masizole Makashe. And then SAPRA recommends government lifts pause on the Johnson & Johnson vaccine rollout. In Cape Town, the South African Health Products Regulatory Authority, otherwise known as SAPRA, recommended on Saturday that the government lift the pause on administrating the Johnson & Johnson's COVID-19 vaccines given that certain conditions are met. These conditions include but are not limited to strengthened screening and monitoring of participants who are at high risk of a blood clot 
clotting disorder, Sapra said. In addition, measures are to be implemented to ensure the safe management of any participants who develop vaccine-induced thrombosis. In our last story, Gales River Police hunt two assailants in suspected gang-related murders. On Saturday afternoon, two men were killed and another two were left wounded after gunmen opened fire in the vicinity of Van Riebeck Road. In Cape Town, Girls River Police detectives were probing a case of double murder and two cases of attempted murder following a suspect gang-related shooting. On Saturday afternoon, two men were killed and another two left wounded after gunmen opened fire in the vicinity of the Van Riebeck Road. The police's Andre Trout said two men aged 23 and 41 were shot and killed while two others aged 22 and 30 were wounded. It is suspected that one of the fatal victims was the target in a possible gang-related attack and the other two were caught in the crossfire. Two suspects fled the scene and are yet to be arrested. Anyone with information is urged to please contact the Girls River Police. Thank you so much for tuning into our news bulletin this Monday with Catching Up with Namsa. Thank you uh, for uh, always just being here with us and sending us your comments and uh, uh, suggestions. We truly appreciate them. Please keep doing that. And of course, let everybody know that uh, we are here and we're not going anywhere. That's the best home of black entertainment. Not in Phil Flix. Join the rest of my colleagues from all over the world as we keep you updated, informed and entertained. From myself, Namsa, I bid thee farewell. Blessed Monday. Thank you.